What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to talk about the fact that we've got all of the alternate art leaders from OP10. They've been revealed. Not only do we know what style they're in, but we've actually got all six of them. No mucking about. Bandai gave us all six in one go, so we can see the entire list. Awesome. Now the bad news. They are, in my humble opinion... Hands down, no argument, the worst set of alternate art leaders that we've had so far. Sorry about that. So let's go and whack three of them on the screen. Let, let's show the Trafalgar Law, the Usopp, and the Sugar. You'll notice they've got kind of different art styles. A little bit at least. Which is a little bit weird, given that we generally have a uniform art style between all of the alternate art leaders in a particular set. And then you look at the artist credit in the top right-hand corner. And then you realise they're just stills from the anime. It's not new artwork. It's just stills from the anime, which I don't like. And I've been pretty clear on this channel. I've been pretty consistent, honestly, on this channel about the fact that I don't think this is a good thing. Now, it's not as bad as it used to be. Like, if we go back to the very, very, very beginning of the game, we did have some just terrible cards, artwork-wise, which were, you know, go back to, like, the early starter deck. So go to starter deck one, just because, I don't know, it's the first starter deck. And we can see cards like Karu, for instance, which is just like, what's the point? Like, it, it's just a half card with a little scan of the anime. It, it's not good. Not a fan. Fun little side note, they never used to put artist credits on the anime ones. Now they do, but they just credit as TV animation, blah, blah, blah. Didn't like that. More recently, they have started doing this a little bit more. So into Legends, for instance, the alternate art of Kaido and Lin Lin was a still from the anime. And I told you at the time, I wasn't a big fan of this. And it's not because I don't like the anime. I haven't watched it all, but I have started watching it with my boys. and I'm very much enjoying it. And it's not because I don't think the anime style isn't cool. I do think the anime style is cool. The issue I've got here is we have this artwork. We don't need this artwork anymore. We've already got it. What's happening here is instead of being given lovely new bits of art from talented artists, giving lovely reimaginings of our favorite One Piece characters... We've just got a still from an anime someone's picked out and gone like, yeah, fine, that'll do, let's roll. And I think as fans, we lose out here. I don't like having anime stills as card artwork. I would rather just watch the anime and have brand new artwork. We don't need this. I'm not a fan. And I think the law looks cool, don't get me wrong. I, I think a lot of these look fine. It's not that I hate them. But I've in every set so far, I've been really excited to pull an alternate art leader. And I just think in OP10, this is going to be the first set I've just not been that excited to pull an alt art leader. I don't think they're going to do this with the alt art characters. I desperately hope they're not going to. But honestly, for this set, give me the alt art characters. I'll leave the leaders to somebody else. And I think I can illustrate this point best by just giving you a quick run-through of the old art leaders that we've had previously. So, let's show you one from each set. Let's start off with OP01 and Rowan Oazoro. Now, these were manga heads. This is what we initially had. And you can call me a hypocrite if you want, because obviously this is not brand new artwork. This is just a manga still. But, it's Oda. We basically took a really nice portrait of the characters drawn by Oda. I love these. And I know I'm saying I don't like the anime scans as artwork, but I do like scenes from the manga. Generally speaking, not a huge fan of that, honestly. But I think with the old art leaders, it works perfectly and I love it. Over in OPO2, we still had the manga heads take Smoker, for instance. My favourite one from that set. Big fan of Smoker, so that was really cool. Then we go to OPO3, and we had a unique one. Take a look at Nami. We've not had this style come back yet, which is weird because all the other styles keep coming back around. In OPO4, we had the leader with the crew behind them. Take Rebecca as an example. These are my favourite style of alt art leaders we've had so far. I think these are redonkulous. 
and I absolutely love them. Over in OPO5, we were back to Manga Head. Take a look at Bello Betty for an example, just like back in OPO1 and OPO2. Over in OPO6, we had cards that are the same kind of style as Manga Heads, but they're actually by brand new artists. So the Perona here is by Ryuda, although it's in the same kind of style, which is to say, just you've got that map background and a zoom in on the face of the leader. This all makes perfect sense. I kind of like these. I liked them pretty much the same as the manga heads. I thought they were cool. We then went to EB01 and we found ourselves with the leader with their crew behind them like we had in OP04, which as I've said, my favorite style of alt art leader. I'd like these to keep coming back, honestly. And having a Kiros to go with a Rebecca really did make me happy. OP07, we stuck with that style of leader, which, you know, Cool, quite nice, big fan of the egghead, need to actually pick that one up at some point. It is frankly not expensive right now. Then in OP08, we went back to fake manga heads. Same style, but they're not manga heads, they're not odor artwork. They are just kind of, you know, like I say, they're, they're fake manga heads. And then OP09, we don't have any English scans, so I need to show you the Japanese scan. But when we got to OP09... We went back to full-on manga heads with older artwork. And you know they're older artwork because they've got no artist credit in the top right-hand corner. So we've been flicking around a little bit in terms of the design. And except for OP03, we've been circling back to them. But now we've apparently gone to just TV animation stills. And I, I don't like this. I really don't like this at all. Now, I will say they have actually credited the individual artist as well as TV animation One Piece, key animation, and then they've put the actual name of the key animator. But no, not, not a fan of these. And it's not that I don't think they look cool. It's that we could have had, you know, the older artwork or we could have had brand new artwork or something like that. And these really stand out to me as the weaker so far. As always, obviously very keen to hear your opinions in the comment section. But essentially here, we've just got six stills of the anime when we could have had six new pieces of artwork. Sure, it's easier and cheaper for Bandai, but I honestly think as fans we lose out here. I hope this is a one-off. But of course, what am I going to do? Show you all the six alternate art leaders, go on a big rant about the fact that I don't like the new style, and then not at least take five minutes to actually explain what each of them do? Nah, mate. That seems a little bit rude. So let's go and have a quick whistle-stop tour through all of the leaders from OP10. So to start off with Law, that was the first one that was revealed. We got a green-yellow leader, 5,000 power, 4 life, standard dual color leader we got a supernova and don x1 activate main once per turn if the total cost of your characters is five or more you may return one of your characters to your hand reveal the top card of your life and if it's a supernova card with a cost of five or less you may play it but obviously it's part yellow lots of recovery you can stack your life in yellow and then start playing characters for free keep an eye on this one plus bouncing characters to your hand is good because of the whole you know you can get counter and all back in your hand. Sounds good to me. As for Captain Eustace Kid, that is the other supernova we got here, although it's also Kid Pirates. We have a mono leader, yellow, 5,000 power, 5 life. And at the end of your turn, you may turn the top card of your life face up. If you can't, you're not allowed to use this skill. And then turn up to one of your 3 to 8 cost characters with the supernova type active and give them blocker until the end of your opponent's next turn. So get a character active, give them blocker. This honestly sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Now I've been pretty clear that Usopp is not my favorite character in the One Piece series, but I do think this leader is good. We've got a blue, black, dress, rosa, and straw hat leader. And I do think this one has a huge amount of potential. Firstly, it gives your two cost and greater dress rosa characters plus one cost. Gives them a, a bit of protection from skills that target based on cost. And then on your opponent's turn, once per turn, when one of your dress rosa type characters are removed from the field by your opponent's effect or are KO'd, if you have five or fewer cards in hand, draw one. So you get extra cost to give you protection. 
and then you also get to draw. I'm just saying that seems pretty good, actually. Honestly, all in all, I think that seems cool. Now, we do have the Smoker Leader, which is actually Smoker in Toshigi's body. But that's a whole, you know, Punk Hazard arc thing. 5,000 power, 4 life, red, green, Punk Hazard and Navy. And on your opponent's turn, all of your Navy and Punk Hazard characters gain 1,000 power. So they're harder to KO and your blockers are stronger and all of that. And then activate main once per turn. If you have a character with 7,000 power or more, activate to Don. But it's important to note, it is once per turn. It doesn't say your turn. Doesn't say your opponent's turn. It just says once per turn. I do feel like this is quite important. We've then got Caesar Clown, which is also Punk Hazard and Red. But then it's also Scientist and Blue. 5,000 power, 4 life, obviously. Don X2, when attacking, you may return one of your Punk Hazard characters with a cost of two or more to the owner's hand. Like we said, with Lord Bouncing characters is good. And then KO one of your opponent's characters with 4,000 power or less. And obviously you're playing red, so you're going to be lowering power as we go. And that's going to be a lot of fun. And then we've got Sugar. Because it just feels mean to only tell you about five of the six leaders. And what we've got here from Sugar is a dual colour red and purple Don Quixote Pirates. And at the end of your turn, if you have a Don Quixote Pirates character with 6,000 power or more, set one of your Don to active. And on your opponent's turn, once per turn, when you activate an event, add one of your Don cards from your Don deck active. Which again, I can't be the only one that thinks is pretty good. We've got a decent batch of leaders in this set. I like them a lot. And I'm disappointed in the art style personally. I would much prefer any of the other types we've seen in the past. But I really want to hear from you guys on this one. I'm going to be checking the comments quite closely. I want to know if everyone else feels the way I do about this. Or whether I'm just being a bit of a grumpus. Let me know in the comment section. And of course, let me know who your favourite leader is from the set. Go nuts! Be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about One Piece and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wasi Plays.